Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 39. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 3. Hey, in uh, this video here, we got to talk about variability. And this is right on the heels of talking about averages, typical values, and in particular, the mean. Now, what is variability? It's the spread in the data. We ask the question, hey, how spread out is the data, right? If you had a stock, two stocks to choose from, 10% each, but one had sometimes got minus 20, other times got 20% return, whereas the other stock that got 10% always got 9, 10, 11, 12. Which one would you want? Well, variability will help, uh, help you choose, right? Because the spread in the data for a stock that's earning 10% that goes from minus 20 to positive 20 is much bigger. The spread is bigger than a stock that goes from 9 to 12 all the time. Now, are the another way to think of variability is are the data points clustered around the mean? Uh, another way to think about it is does the mean fairly represent the data points? And this really is the question that uh, you should think of when you think of variability and ultimately the, the measure we'll use the most is standard deviation. But the question is, does the mean fairly represent its, its data points? Because if we're using a mean as a typical value, one value to stand in for all the other values, this is a good question to ask. Now, we're going to talk about variability in a few steps here. I'm going to start out by showing you visually what variability looks like. Now we have two data sets, wage data, set one, set two. Let's calculate the mean for both. So I'm just doing my average. So 14 bucks is the average for this, equals average for the second one. So the mean for that one, 14. They're both 14. Well, they look the same. Each one has the same typical value that is going to represent all of its data points. But we want to say, which one of these represents its data points more fairly? Really, you could think about it either that way or clustered, right? If all the values are clustered right around this one, but this one doesn't have all the values clustered around it, then this one doesn't represent, the mean doesn't represent its data points. Uh, as fairly as this one. Let's do this first visually. And I have set up the data. There's the x, and I set up a y, but each one of the y's has the same value. This will plot an xy scatter with all the data points listed horizontally. I'm going to highlight this whole range, go up to Insert, Scatter, and click on this one. Now we're going to have to do some adjusting here. The first thing I want to do is uh, we really don't need uh, this axis here to go all the way down to zero. So I'll click on it and control one. And I'll change minimum to five. Now uh, we don't need this one. And I'm going to click here. And if you click on a label, you can just, uh, I'm going to type a, a very, I can't spell. I can't, if I'm talking, I can't spell. Did I spell it right? Variability. OK, well, that's close enough for now. Now there's the data points for our first set, but watch this. I'd like to plot the mean right here somewhere, plot the other set, and then actually see visually the spread. Now in order to plot this, this is an x, y, we need an x um, and a y. So I'm actually going to scoot this down here a little bit, and I'll come right here, and I'm going to type uh, the number, see so we got a, a 2 for this. So I'm going to uh, put a 1 here. And then I'm going to put uh, ultimately put a 3 here. We'll come and plot this one later. Now, we're going to need to be able to highlight all these. So I'm going to actually scoot this down here. And the whole trick to this is going to be going to the design context sensitive ribbon, going to select data. And we're actually going to select by using add. Now, the first thing we can add, we could actually go ahead and add our uh, x and y here. The series name, I'll click right there. The x values, I'm going to highlight these right here. And then the y value. Now, this little thing equals array curly brackets 1. you got to highlight that and delete it, because sometimes it'll get in the way. Now, watch this. Um, can I just highlight what underneath the chart? Yeah, it's letting me. OK, and then click OK. I'm going to add, well, we can go look at that right now. We can already see which one has uh, visually more uh, 
spread in the data. But let's go ahead and plot these other two values too. I do need to move it down here so I can highlight these. Go back up to Design, Select Data, Add. And now the name for this one, I'll just click Mean 1. The X will be that. And the Y, I'm going to highlight that and hit Delete. And this will be the 1. Click OK. Now I'm going to click Add again. The series name will be mean2, the x will be this, and I'm going to highlight that and hit delete. And then click OK, click OK, and sure enough now we have a visual portrayal. See they're both in the same spot. Here it is, this mean right here, and actually we could add some data labels here. I'm going to click on this one, go up to layout, data labels, and I'm going to come all the way down to more. And then I'm going to say the series name, get rid of that one. Now watch this in 2007, you can actually just come over here and click on the next one right there. And uh, mm, that didn't work because it didn't pick up the, uh, uh, the right thing. So we have to highlight this and go back up here. I'm about to lay out data labels, more labels. And I'm going to click series and then click close. All right, so now we can see mean 1, mean 2, they're exactly the same, but which one has more spread? Visually, that's it. This one has less, this one has more. So when we calculate our measures, we're going to do range, we're going to do variance, we're going to do standard deviation. This one will have a bigger standard deviation, which means the spread in the data is greater. And we'll actually do our calculations for the same little data sets. This one will have a smaller uh, standard deviation. And what it means is this mean 1 represents its data points more fairly. It also means that the data points are clustered more tightly around the mean. And if we're using means as everywhere in the world, every field uses average. What is the average for a particular time period? Variability matters because if the variability or standard deviation ultimately is small, it means that mean represents the data points more fairly. Uh, fairly. So that's a visual portrayal. When we come back in our next video, we'll do range and interquartile range, and then later we'll do our standard deviation. See you next video.